And we are getting to be live. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and those of you who are considering joining a Toastmasters club, our potential Toastmasters. Welcome to Wake Up with Toastmasters. My name is Ken Richardson. I am your District 115 Club Growth Director. And with me today is my co-host, distinguished Toastmaster, past District Governor, Phyllis Trivi. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Ken, and good morning to our public out there. We're here anxious to answer your questions. So please go on live and send us a message. And Absolutely. if you're watching us during the day at any other time and you have a question, don't think, you know, they think that Ken won't answer it because he will. Type it in and eventually he will get all the messages that come on the Facebook page. So Absolutely. ask questions. Absolutely, Phyllis. Thank you so much for that plug. Yes, uh, we, I, uh, some of you will notice I'm monitoring on my laptop here what's going on on our Facebook post. You can join us on facebook.com slash TMD115CGD. That's our Facebook page. We are posted live. And there, if you join us, you can make comments and ask questions. Today, we are going to talk about a very important officer role. We began last week with a series on club officer roles with the goal of not only educating our viewers a little bit more about each role, but also encouraging our members to consider serving in those roles. So we talked about president. We're gonna to talk today about vice president of education, which is actually one of my favorite roles. I know you fellows have been in that role many times. What's your perspective? Well, I believe that most people think that it is the hardest role, but it's really not. It's something that you can do ahead of time at your leisure. So I would say, go for it. It's not that difficult. And it's amazing how many of the jobs that are given to the VP of Ed can be dispersed to other members. And it works out really well. So it's not the hardest job. All well, of them just take time. It's a wonderful job, actually. I mean, I, I think two of my favorite roles, and it's going to sound weird, are secretary and VPE. And uh, I guess you know, the secretary comes from many, many years of serving in that role. You know, sometimes you get sort of locked in. Oh, Ken's going to be secretary. Let's just make him secretary for life <laughs> or VPE. But you're right. We're going to talk about uh, mentoring. And one of the things that we want to emphasize for all officer roles is mentoring your successor. Identify someone in the club who may be interested in following in your footsteps and make sure that you spend some time helping them learn the ropes along the way. And they can also fill in for you should you have to miss a meeting. So needless to say, I'm going to have to pull up my PowerPoint. <laughs> Of course you are. Absolutely. There we go. We're going to get started here in just a second talking about our VPE. There we go. Excellent. So the Vice President of Education. What do they do? Why do we need them? Why are they so important? Well, let's look into that a little bit. First, we want to point out that the VPE is the second highest ranking club officer after the president. In fact, when the president is absent, it's the VPE who serves as the presiding officer for club meetings or for executive committee meetings when the president can't make it. So it's a very high ranking role in the club and is a very important role. But then all officer roles, I think, are very important. Each is unique and each contributes something unique to the club, but something important. So let's get started here with the VPE. Now I've organized this uh, a little bit differently than perhaps some of our members who've attended uh, TLIs have seen it in the past. And I thought of the VPE responsibilities along the lines of club meeting quality. What is their role in making sure that their club 
has quality meetings? What's their role in terms of member relations? How do they interact with members? What services do they provide and what do they expect from members? And then of course, club success. <coughs> Excuse me, we'll talk about each of these categories. And again, I see that Jennifer Smith has joined us. Good morning, Jennifer. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, get on our Facebook page and ask some questions. So we're gonna start with club meeting quality. And this is something that you and I have talked about before, Phyllis, the fact that our membership is down in some clubs. And that means that attendees often are being assigned multiple roles. That in and of itself is a challenge. But clearly one of the keys to having quality meetings is making sure that each role is filled. And this is the primary responsibility of the VPE, along with the Toastmaster. They often work together to make sure that these roles are filled. And it can be a challenge, but it's also an even greater challenge if you are uh, in a low membership club and that you are called upon to fulfill many roles at a club meeting. What's your take on this, Phyllis? How do we improve the quality of our clubs uh, by making our roles, uh, make sure that all of our roles are filled. I think this is an absolute must. We never close a meeting until all the roles for the following meeting are filled. Do our members take on more than one role? Absolutely. It's like you kind of revolve around um, who hasn't done this role in the last two weeks? Or is there a, a role that you want to have? And usually we talk, we start out with, with speaker. You know, is there somebody that needs to do a speaking, you know, be a speaker this week and follow it through them with Toastmaster and then add on the other extras. And you know, we when... allow the things that are, uh, able to do by others like a counter to be taken on by guests if they happen to appear. But we're always prepared. Like we have one member that travels. Well, we give her like a counter or word of the day. And if she doesn't appear, then we have a backup. We know who's going to do that role. So never leave one meeting until all of the roles are filled for the next meeting. That's good advice. And I know when we were meeting in person, it seemed to be a lot easier in a way because we would always bring a spreadsheet yes. and have people sign up on the spot. And now, at least in my home club, we rely on people and we remind them, and maybe too often, go online and sign up. But we're not as successful as we could. Another role or another responsibility of the BPE is to support the members and the Toastmasters, exactly what you were talking about. Make sure that if you as VPE are aware that let's say Phyllis needs to do an educational, she has a, then talk to her and say, Phyllis, you haven't given a speech in a while. I can see that the path you're on, you are at this point. So you support your members and the Toastmaster and together, Make sure you are meeting your member needs while building quality meetings. And the other thing that we often forget along the way is to schedule educational sessions from the Successful Club series. And here I'm thinking particularly about Moments of Truth. Yes. The Moments of Truth program, and there are others. I mean, it's a, things like parliamentary procedures, which we've talked about. But the Moments of Truth program challenges your club to take a hard look at itself and to evaluate key interactions with, although it's targeted towards your guest, uh, with your members as well and understand uh, how you are uh, achieving some of the goals built into the moments of trust, of truth. Uh, so I think it's important to do that at least once a year and this typically will fall to the VPE who is monitoring how the club is progressing from meeting to meeting. Some other areas include member relations. 
Well, what do we mean by that? Uh, well, this translates from club, uh, quality club meetings to how you relate to your members and you help them fulfill roles. So one of the most important things is the mentoring program. When you have a new member join your club, they will not stay long unless you have a strong program to welcome them into the club and to mentor them along their Toastmasters journey. And I know this is an area that's near and dear to you, Phyllis. So why don't you share with, uh, with us you know, what your thoughts are on mentoring and, how, and its importance to club success? You're right. It is very, very important because most members uh -oh. join are kind of scared at beginning and they need somebody that has the knowledge of how the club is organized and understands each of the roles. And there is a place where uh, on our website, you can ask for a mentor, but I don't think that that should happen. I think right away, you should ask, is there someone in this club that you recognize that we could work well with? If not, Usually we would say, are there any, is there anybody here that could be a mentor for Phyllis? And if they hold up their hand, they, we pick one to come and be her mentor. You can have many mentors once you're in the club and you feel that you can connect with somebody better than the mentor that's been given you, doesn't mean that you can't go to them and ask them to be your mentor. But when you're first joining a club, people don't know one another. And so it's important that right away a mentor is assigned. That uh, gives the cheers to the new member to be active in the club. Talk to them about when they answered a table topics question. Talk to them about the new, uh, the first speech how to go about getting on pathways, actually taking them to pathways and helping them select their path. So there's many things that a mentor can do right away. So it should not be wait. You don't wait to present a mentor to a new member. I agree. And the other thing is that the BPE should follow up with that member and the mentor. How are things going? Is this a good match? Where are things falling down and what do we need to do to fix it? Also ensure that new members are properly inducted and they're oriented to the club. And like you said, explaining club roles, understanding uh, each meeting role and club officer roles. I think that's part of the orientation process. So you wanna make sure that that happens and you wanna notify the president, hey, this member just got an education award. They, they reached level one or level two or whatever they are in their process, particularly for those newer members, recognition is important. It's because the VPE signs off in base camp, he or she knows where they are in the Pathways program and is in an ideal position to say to the president, hey, next meeting, we wanna make sure that we recognize Phyllis for achieving level one in you know, her presentation mastery path. So that's an important role. Other things that the VPE needs to think about, we talked about base camp, is to be the base camp manager. And I know some people still find navigating base camp uh, in pathways a bit intimidating. And it does, there is a learning curve, but I think the best way to do it is talk to people who have used it. Your successor, for example, can help you. Uh, and just dive in. Don't be afraid to uh, sort of search base camp for what you want and learn how to use it. The primary role, of course, is uh, signing off on uh, achievements for your members. And that's very, very important. There's nothing worse than completing a level, filling out all the paperwork, and then 
the ball is dropped. And that also means you have to learn how to manage Club Central and your club's website. Uh, those are roles that we don't often talk about enough, but it's not enough right now to sign off in Basecamp. You also then have to go into Club Central and fill out the, the forms there to get acknowledgement uh, and full credit within TI. Now, I understand they're working on this so that the Basecamp and Club Central is going to be a one-time entry. But for now, it's a dual entry system. Have you experienced this this issue, Phyllis? Well, I was just looking at this, and it's like, yes, in the middle of the Toastmaster year, when we did not have an additional training session for officers, someone that's done these positions in the past. So we have a new VP of Ed. So I actually went to base camp with her. We went all through how to get into base camp and what she should do in it. And we opened various forms. What happened is she had a, a Zoom room. So then I went into her Zoom room and I let her open all of these things. Then we went to Club Central and I went through everything that was in Club Central with her. So she got you know, individual training on this and knows that I am available at any time. But we even went so far as to go into the current website and change the uh, information about uh, the club directions where we're now meeting at because we had changed. So she has now a preliminary information about all that. She knows how to go in and do it. And she can go into the websites either way, place and look at things. So uh, and learn just by playing around and seeing what's there. And you may have for your free toast host, your club's website, which is usually going to be free toast host. You may have a webmaster or someone who is very savvy technologically that can help you. But as the VPE, you will have the ability to edit agendas, to edit the website, to add things uh, like educational achievements and put those in, make sure that the email addresses and what have you are of your members and phone numbers, all of that is current. So I think understanding the website or making sure if you do have a, a member who is kind of your webmaster, that you communicate Consistently getting that and keeping it up to date. That's very important. And then mentor your successors. We talked about earlier, you may have identified someone in the club who's interested in the VPE role, who's maybe soon ready to move up and assume an officer position. So make sure you identify that person. Be proactive. Approach them about learning the role. They can help you when you're out of town, for example, but they can also be ready to serve in that role in the next election cycle. In terms of club success, so we've talked about quality meetings, we've talked about member relations. For the overall success of the club, there are certain things that VPE should do. That includes making sure that all of the officers receive and complete the district sponsored training, the TLI. It's so important, you know, this year, and, and I do have a bug, uh, a bone to pick, I should say, with TI when they say, oh, it's okay to have four, four officers trained and you get credit. I think that's lowering the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think that all seven officers need to be trained. And I know as uh, District 115, we uh, recognize those clubs that have all seven officers trained, even though the TI requirement is at least four, I don't think that's enough. What do you think, Phyllis? Well, all positions are important, but I always thought that sometimes the reason not all seven go to the training is because they've been before. And I am very happy about the training that's given to uh, 
members that are fulfilling roles that they've already been trained for. It's, uh, I think that's a great thing that uh, Jean Williams came up with. And gotcha. I think that in that case, you might get all seven to be trained. But yes, if you've not done this role before, you need to know what is out there, what information there is, and you need to see other people that are in the role and you need someone that you can talk to if there's not somebody in your club that you can ask questions directly to after the training. That's a good point. And I'm glad you uh, acknowledge the, the early bird training that it was another innovation by our program quality director, Gene Williams. And it answers that question. Well, look, I've been president 500 times. Why do I need to take this again? So this provides a little bit different perspective in the early bird training. It's a panel discussion of lessons learned and you know, advice and that kind of thing from other, say, club presidents or club VPEs uh, in an online environment. So it's a really good innovation and it's it's proven to be very popular. So that's going to be coming back coming up soon. If you look in this month's newsletter, you'll see the dates for the early bird, and then we're going to do an in-person TLI, and then we're going to do an online TLI. So we're trying to accommodate uh, the needs of all of our members in one way or another. Manage club speech contests. When I first, I, I remember the first time that I was a BPE, uh, I didn't appreciate what that meant. I, okay, I, <laughs> what is that? What does I have to do? Well, you're really serving sort of as a contest chair, or you're recruiting someone to uh, serve as the contest chair and then supporting them at the club level. And as you and I know, uh, over the years, you can actually have the contest, in which case you must follow the rules in the, in the rule book, or the club can appoint someone to represent them at the area level, but it is incumbent upon the BPE to manage that process and make sure the club is aware of their options and to make sure that if they are gonna have the contest, that it is conducted in accordance with TI guidelines. And then finally, uh, this is another area that isn't often uh, talked about, and this I'm gonna talk about some more areas, but uh, represent the club at the area and district councils. At the area level, our area directors work very hard to be that link between the district and the club and to serve their needs. Uh, as a VPE, part of your role is to serve on that council along with the president and the vice president of membership. At the district council level, it's the club president and the club VPE who are voting uh, on the issues that confront the council. So make sure you're aware of that responsibility as a BPE and that you fulfill that role, that part of your role, because it's very, very important. It keeps your club plugged into what's going on within the area and within the district. And that way you can share appropriately the information. Any thoughts on any of these uh, that you wanna share, Phyllis? Or did I miss anything so far? <laughs> well, pub speech contest, you know, this is a begging process to get people to volunteer to be in a speech contest. You just got to keep talking it up about the wonderful rewards and that we need contestants and please volunteer. As you never had to beg me. I loved contests when I was out. <laughs> well, the new I'm <laughs> Newer members are, are kind of shy about this thing. So we call it volunteered. They, you know, <laughs> call it told. We tell them they need to do this. Well, as far as the area council meeting, absolutely. Yeah, the VP of Ed is a member, but you know, not always, they can't always attend everything. So I would say be sure that if you're not attending, someone else from your club is your representative and goes to the district council meetings. I used my council meetings not only for training, but to decide on everything for our contest. Then my day, we picked our own day 
to have our contest. And I let that happen with the club membership. Absolutely. Some other things to think about. Ensure that members understand and participate in pathways. This is where assigning the right me mentor comes in, walking them through the process. But the VPE may also want to offer an orientation program about pathways or have them attend one of the district sponsored programs that introduce people to pathways. And the thing I've learned is that this is not one and done. <laughs> this is something that requires some review, some repetition, so that your new members get familiar with and are actively participating in pathways. Again, recognize members for their achievements and then monitor the club's progress in the DCP. We're gonna talk about the role of the executive committee here in just a second. We're a little, running a little behind, but we're gonna, I think it's important. We always do this, Phyllis, but, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about the development of um, the club success plan and the role of the executive committee and monitoring the distinguished club program over time. So let's move into that. Take a look again, just to refresh our viewers' memory about the executive committee. It's the president, vice president of education, vice president of membership, VP of public relations, club secretary, treasurer, sergeant at arms, and immediate past president. We're going to be reviewing these roles. So our, as we go forward, each of these roles, Today, we're finishing VPE. We did president last time. Next time, we'll do VP membership. So our members will see this quite a bit. They'll see this repeated uh, about these roles. But what's important is uh, making sure that the VPE presents regular reports on club activities at the uh, executive committee and that he or she participates in the development of the club success plan and the distinguished club program. Once you've done that, you've got a roadmap. And if you don't have a roadmap, you'll never know how to get to your destination. So this club success plan coupled with the DCP to help you monitor your progress are really, really important, but I think often overlooked aspects of what the executive committee needs to do. What are your thoughts, Phyllis? <coughs> we always worked with the Distinguished Club program first. Find out what the 10 uh, options are for the points that are needed to become a Distinguished Club and who in that club can like do a level one, a level two, who's committed to do a level four or a level five. And I actually print out that particular piece of paper and write on it. I think it's part of the success plan. But also the next thing is uh, the membership. Who's going to take over officer positions the next time around? That's part of the success plan. Uh, can this person actually continue on in their position? or do we need to be looking at new officers? And a lot goes into it. Also, another thing about the success plan would be your awards. We talked about awards, but who pays for those awards now? Do we have uh, dues? Have we not have dues during the pandemic, but now all of a sudden we're going to be in person and presenting awards so do we need to start dues back? So there's things that you can talk about in the success plan that may not think about at the top. You may not think about when you say club success plan, but there's a lot to it. Yeah, you're right. And that's a good point. I'm gonna to have to modify this, this particular slide to include, make sure you prepare a budget because you're, yeah. you're, you're right. You're, we've been online, many of our clubs, and we have not charged any club dues. Mm -hmm. It's just been the TI dues. But as clubs go hybrid or they start to meet back in person, developing a budget as part of your club success plan is going to take on uh, greater and greater importance. Because you're right, 
uh, giving some kind of recognition, even if it's a certificate or a ribbon or whatever it might be, uh, or one of the pins that you can get uh, for each level at Toastmasters, the club has to decide, is this something, how far are we gonna go? Uh, what are the limits of our budget to do this? So I'm glad you brought that up. One of the things that we've discovered is a proper microphone. So you're, you know, we're gonna have hybrid meetings, which we believe are going to be in effect from now on. We need a proper microphone to sit in the middle of a table so everybody in the whole room can speak and be heard. So another thing you have to plan for in your success plan. That's, that's absolutely true because now we, we suddenly have uh, equipment <laughs> like oh. speakers, like you know, cables, like maybe people are bringing their laptops. So it's, it's a different kind of environment. Uh, and I think you're right, we're gonna have a lot of hybrids. I know there are a couple of clubs that uh, are, have gone strictly back to in-person and they're not offering hybrid, but we're gonna have hybrid meetings. We're still gonna have online meetings. To wrap things up before we uh, go, we're running a little bit behind as usual. Uh, I invite our viewers to take a picture of this page. This gives you the resources that VPE can find on toastmasters.org that will allow you to understand the role better. Uh, it is a lot of reading, <laughs> but yeah, it is worth it. And you don't have to do it all at once. Uh, do it piecemeal, but take a look at the DCP uh, and the club success plan uh, and make sure that you're ready with that. Uh, well, that, we're about out of time here, Phyllis. Do you have any comments that you want to wrap things up with? I was just looking at that long list that I remember the time when I gave a presentation on VP of Ed, how to be successful in 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes was all I had to talk about that. But well, yeah, you, it can be successful. There are some details that need to go into it. And hopefully you'll have a predecessor that is willing to train you. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've spent 30 minutes or so talking about VPE. A normal training session is 50 minutes plus 10 minutes of Q&A. Uh, there is a lot to learn, but uh, there are lots of people around to help. I just want to remind our viewers that we have a contest coming up, several as a matter of fact. The C1, C2 contest is this Saturday. Doors open at 9.30 a.m. at Palo Verde High School. Coming up on April 23rd will be the Divisions A and B, also at Palo Verde. And on April 28th will be the Divisions C and D, and that's at the historic Fifth Street School in downtown Las Vegas. If you have questions about any of these events, uh, please be sure to send me an email, d115cgd at gmail.com. We have our educational night coming up on yeah the 9th of April, second Saturday of every month. Game night is on the last Saturday of every month. And you'll find details and links in the newsletter. Finally, let's not forget May 14th. The registration link is out for our first in-person contest, uh, not contest, convention. Okay. Our first, there will be conference. contests, uh, yeah. but our first conference. Uh, and uh, uh, since we've been at D115, the cost is very modest. It's $75 per person. And for that, you're going to have two contests. You're going to have some educationals. You're going to have a banner parade, if you remember those. Uh, they're <laughs> always fun. We'll have a recipient of the Communication and Leadership Award and a keynote address. If you have any questions again, please shoot me an email. And we will see you again on Thursday. And I think at that time, we'll be talking about the vice president of membership if we don't have a guest instead. So thanks, Phyllis. Thanks, all our viewers. We will see you soon. Have a great, great day. Bye. Bye.